I have some bad news today. This lesson, 46, is a doozy. It's not my fault. Look in the book. It's really long. Like nine examples and like a lot, a lot of practice. Take a break if you get tired. Okay? Well, there you are with the warm-up answers. How I did this was 9 times 80, which was $7.20, plus 2 times 9, which is 18. So I did $7.20 plus 18 cents. So 20 plus 18 is 38. Uh, 3.6 divided by 10 squared, which is 100. That just means we move that decimal to the left twice. So that's how we ended up at 0.036. Um, this one we could have done it two ways. You could do cross, do the cross product and divide by 8. So that would be 20 times 4 is 80. Divided by 8 is 10. Or you might have realized, oh, 4 eighths reduces to 1 half. So if this is 1 half, 2 times 10 is 20. So, or just 1 half is 10 twentieths. Lots of ways to do that one. This one, square root of 4 plus 8 is 12. Estimate, that would be 5 times 2, which is 10, and 9 tenths of 80, well, 1 tenth is 8, 8 times 9 is 72. All right, I'm going to try and zoom through this as fast as I can. This is like the longest set of notes I've made. I kept going and going in this book, and I'm shocked at how big this lesson is, so I apologize. I didn't write the lesson. I don't know. I would have probably tried to shorten it up. So I'm going to try and do what I think is review for you pretty quick. And if it's not or you get stuck, these are all things that your parents can help on because they um, they go grocery shopping and they have to give tips to waiters or waitresses. And they also uh, pay tax on everything they buy. So they know what they're doing and get their help if you get stuck. Let's start with the unit price. The unit price is a is the cost for a single unit measurement of the product. So when you go to the store, you might see the cereal boxes are a big one because they're all different sizes and all different prices. And so what you want to do is make sure you're not getting ripped off when you're buying a box of cereal. And the only way to know that is to really pay attention to the price per ounce rather than how much like a 24 box, ounce box of cereal that might cost $3.60. How do we know if that's a good buy or another box that's like, well, like on our next question, a 36 ounce box of cereal for $4.50? Let's compare these two. How do we know which one's a good thing to buy? Most of us, a lot of us, uh, go into it blindly, but luckily the grocery stores post this on the... Um, when they list the price, they usually post, post this below somewhere and you can see price per ounce um, on, most, on most things. So let's go ahead and give this one a shot. What is the price? Uh, so you've got 24 ounces for $3.60. So what we want to do, a unit price is how much one ounce is. So if 24 of them cost $3.60, how much is just one of them? Well, how we do that is we take your total price and divide it by the units. Okay, so it's a it, it's a division problem. So weight is measured in ounces. So the unit price in is a cost for one ounce. So we're going to divide, and when we do that, 36 divided by 24 is. Huh, I'm surprised they didn't show it, but we'd actually have to go, okay, and that's okay. 360, so I'm terribly sorry if this video gets long. I will try and edit some of this out. Okay, so. And. There it is. Okay, so 15 cents, because this is money. So 15 cents is how much one ounce is. And that's how we show it as ratios. So $3.60 is to 24 ounces as 15 cents is to one ounce. So one ounce is 15 cents. And you can just write 
per ounce, you know, when you're doing a store problem. So let's compare that to this one. Find the unit price for a 36 ounce box of cereal. That is 450. So it's, and then you're thinking, and that's, so we want to know how much one ounce is. Basically, we want to know what goes up there. So again, we divide. I'm trying to do this fast again. So we get that when we divide. So what that is, is 12 and a half cents per ounce. Okay, so that means that, and so our answer would maybe say 12.5 cents per ounce would be a good way to, to write that if you have a half a cent. Okay, I remember those were called mills, M-I-L. All right, now we're going to talk about rates, where we've got something like Isaac pedaled 84 kilometers in four hours. What was his average speed? Okay, so that is where we take speed is a ratio of distance to time. So he went 84 kilometers in four hours. So what we write is 84 kilometers in four hours. Because we basically want to know what goes up there. 84, and so we just divide. 84 divided by 4 is 12. Okay, so I'm going to put 12 up here just to see it. And that means 12 kilometers per one hour. And so that's how, that's his average speed, 12 kilometers per hour. Okay, example four. This is used a lot, actually, um, because us grown-ups want to know what kind of cars uh, take the most gas and how many can go. So what you really want is your car to be able to go as far, farther than ever on a tank of gas, because the more often you fill up, the more it costs money, right? And so... Uh, you want to get as much distance out of a tank of gas as you can. And what we call that is miles per gallon. So how many miles can you go with one gallon of gas? And every car, every, you know, cars vary in what that looks like. Usually bigger cars um, get less miles, go less miles with one gallon of gas than some of the smaller cars. That's generally speaking unless it's a hybrid or whatever. Things, some of that is changing a little bit in this day and age. So Alita rode her motorcycle on an interstate trip. She's kind of a, you know, she likes to travel, I guess. She's an adventure seeker. Good job, Alita. She traveled 243 miles on 4.5 gallons of gas. Alita's motorcycle averaged how many miles per gallon on her trip? So it's just like what we've been doing before. She did 243 miles and 4.5 gallons is what got her there. And we want to know how much she can go with one gallon of gas. So we divide again, 243 divided by 4.5, and I'm just going to give it to you because this is a lesson, but we could go do 243 divided by 4.5, but... I'm just going to give it to you in this case because I don't want this to go any longer than it needs to. And so when we divide that, you get 54 miles in one gallon. So we're going to say 54 miles per gallon, MPG. And another way to say that is M over G, um, MPG. So that's they did, yeah, miles over gallon. So that's actually really good, 54 miles per gallon. So keep up the good work, Alita. Good job to um, save gas. All right. Now we're going to talk about percents. For a 5% service fee, well, no, we're not going to talk about percents. They trick us. I thought we were going to talk about percents. Instead, they're going to talk about exchange rates between different countries and their um, dollar value. So... Uh, 
For a 5% fee, a merchant agreed to exchange $20 for 2,400 yen, or 2,400 yen for $20. Okay, so this is American money, dollars, in the U.S., and then yen is when you travel, um, you went somewhere else, and they're, at that country, they're using yen, and you want to know how much, these are weird, they're not, there's not going to be really any math involved, very little. So the, what they're saying is we've got two different rates, okay? If there were 2,400 yen to our $20, we that's, an, that's a rate, but we want to make it down to a unit. We want to divide this. So if we do that, we get 120 yen per dollar. So that's how we write that. The other rate is if we did $20 to 2,400 yen. So now we're going to put it in dollars to per yen. Okay. So that's going to give us a fraction. That's actually going to give us 1 over 120 when we reduce that. And that's going to be dollars to yen. And that's actually the answer there. And that's, so there's two answers on that. And you're going to have that in one of the practice problems. Okay, so you don't do anything. You just take the fraction and reduce it. Notice both of these rates are reciprocals of each other. Okay, that's important to know. And now we're going to talk about another maybe life situation you've been in. You saved your money. This actually happened to me when I bought my first really cool bike. When I was in grade school, I bought a bike about this price probably. A bicycle was on sale for $119.95. And so I saved up $120. And I was so excited to go to the store and buy it. And, and I had my money and my mom actually said that I um, don't quite have enough because of this thing called tax. So I thought this whole time all I needed was $120. And it turned out that I was not going to have enough because I had to pay taxes. Now, the tax rate where I bought mine was probably higher than six, but I don't remember. So we need to know how much tax is on this bicycle. I don't get to leave the store with my bicycle if I give them $120. So I need to know how much I actually have to bring to the store, right? Uh, so 6%. How do we find 6% of... 119. I'm going to write it over here. This is our workspace. Dollars and 95 cents. Remember, make it 0 0.06, six percent. Move that decimal order over in order to calculate. Okay, so then we go ahead and multiply that through, and we get. Um, you're going to be impressed with me because you're going to see me just write these numbers. I just whipped that out, didn't I? And uh, that's because, oops, I just did two decimal places. Goodness gracious. But yeah, I peeked in the book if you're wondering how I did that math so fast. One, one, two, three, four. So there's my decimal point. Now this is money that we're dealing with here. So how much money is that? Seven dollars and uh, 1970. Uh, so that's that's not going to work, is it? We've got to round, because here's our penny spot. So if we look, we want to round to this spot, so we look over here at the 7. Well, the 7 has power to move that 9 up. Oh, dear. So if that 9 moves up, this used to drive me nuts. If that 9 moves up, then this becomes a, a 2, and that is going to be what that is rounded, $7.20. So that is the tax. So... Here I thought I had enough, I had 120 bucks, and then then I can't leave without having more money. Do you know how discouraging that was? But I will tell you, my mom is awesome, like all moms, and she covered the tax because she saw how hard I worked to get that money, and she's also my mom. She's awesome. So what is the total price, including tax? So that's the tax, extra in order to leave with that bike. So I've got to tack this on to the original price. And so in order to leave with that bike, 
I had to put all that together, try not to cry, and it looks like it cost $127.15. So I, I just had my mom cover the rest and that was very sweet of her. There is another way to do this and I really wanted to show it to you except that our um, maybe I will do it in class one day. We just have so little time but we did 6%. I, I encourage you Maybe I'll just do it really quick. I'll pause and I'll do it. I encourage you. That was 6%. I encourage you to find 106% of 119.95. How would we write that? 106% of 106% would be 1.06 times 119.95. I encourage you to do that. And notice a great phenomenon here. In fact, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pause. So I went ahead and did the multiplication. And do you see down here what I got? 127 and four more numbers. So if this is money, let's round. Seven makes this four become a five. So that is $127.15. Okay, so that was one thing. Over here we did 6 times six percent times that and we got this number Then we had to take that and add it over here. Two long steps where I got the exact same number one step. So I want you to think about what I did. Instead of 6% I did 106%. And I'm just going to leave it at that. And I really want you to ask me about this when you see me again in class um, and ask me to talk about this. This took me a while to understand, and then once I understood it, it I was a happy camper. So I'm just going to do that. I want you to wrestle with that for a while. Think about it. Okay, number seven, example seven, find the total price, including tax. So again, that trick could be used on this one. But now we're buying an $18.95 $18 book, 189 pen, 229 pad of paper, and the tax rate is 5%. And we want to know what's the out the, door, out the door price. How much do we have to pay to get all this out the door? So what we have to do is add them up and then find the tax and add the tax in. And that's our final price, right? So let's first do the adding up. And hopefully you're doing this when I am so that you're not just sitting here staring and waiting for me to be done. That would be sad. 18 plus 5. Okay, so $23.13 is what it is without tax. But we need to, we can't leave with that. So you have a trick. You can either do 105% or just 5%. If you do 105%, you're done. If you do 5%, it's going to take two steps. So I'm going to do the 5%. So 5% of 2313. And 13. we just take that. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, again, uh, this is money, so I see lots past the pennies. So I need to round to the five. The six is kind of big, so the six makes the five turn into a dollar sixteen is the extra amount of money it's going to take to leave with those products. So we've got to add that to twenty three thirteen. I'll know who the true math lovers are who also go ahead and try and do 2313 times 1.05 for 105%. I'll be interested to see who does that. But you can probably guess what your answer is going to be when you do do that. Alright, so 2429 is how much all that's going to cost. Okay, number 8. 
The restaurant bill was about $20. Josh wants to leave a $15 tip for the server. How much money should Josh leave Josh leave for the tip? So 15% of 20. There is a shortcut and a long way to do this. I'll show you the long way and then we'll shortcut it. Okay, I don't, when I'm doing a 20 and a 15, I like this trip trick. Okay, it's 0.15. I put the 20 down here. Because this has one non, non-zero digit, this has two non-zero digits. So I put this one down here because then I can put that zero down for a placeholder. And now all I have to do is multiply two times 15, basically. So we get 300. Two decimals. So that's actually $3. So that's how much Josh should leave as a tip, $3. Okay, that's actually, it seems short, but that's not that's not the shortest way. Another way we'd do is we've got a $20. So what's, and we want 15%. Well, 15% is the same as finding 10% and adding 5%. Well, 10% of 20 is always move that decimal over. 10% of 20 is 2, and 5% is half of 10%. So it's 2 plus 1, so we get $3. This was a lot easier. The reason it looks longer is because I usually do this in my head. I go, okay, 20% or two, sorry, two dollars is 10%. So two plus one, three. So I just showed you this is what's happening in my brain. Okay, shortcut, long way. Shortcut, there you go. Oh, we get to try this again. Mentally estimate a 15% tip on a $39.45 restaurant bill. So let's just round 39 to 40. So 15% of 40, okay? What's 10% of 40? Is 4. And 5% is half of 4. So $6 is our tip. So I hopefully zoomed through that fast enough. All of this stuff your parents can help you with, so I really encourage that if this was too fast. Uh, the practice I'm going to go through and work, um, and you can go ahead and stop the video and try them on your own. Alright, what is the unit price for a 28 ounce box of cereal that costs $1.12? So what that is is $1.12 divided by 28. Okay, um, there's another trick to doing this, but I, I'm not going to do that right now. I don't want to overwhelm you with options. So, when we divide 100, if we were to divide that, which I think you should have already, you get um, 4 cents. So 4 times 28 is, or sorry, well, 4 times 28 is going to be 112. So it's 4.04 dollars per 1 ounce. Okay, so what we say is four cents per ounce. Now they are totally lying. I have never in my lifetime seen four cents per ounce cereal. I have, that's great. And I guess maybe if you're a crazy couponer, you found it for that price, but that's not normal. Life's not that cheap anymore, unless you know the tricks. Right, what is the unit price for 11 ounce can of soup for, again, I've not gotten soup before for 55 cents, but, so 55 cents, so dollars, 50.55 dollars is how you'd say that out of a, and we want to know how much one ounce is. So again, we do 55 divided by 11, or 0.5, now that was nice, right, because we, it's a multiple of 11. So we just put that up there, and it's 0 0.05, right? So it's 5 cents, basically, per ounce. Again, I don't, that's not reality anymore. It would be nice. All right, we still have two pages left. It's crazy. I think the biggest problem is you have so much practice. Okay, which is better buy, an 18-ounce jar of jelly that costs $1.98 or a 24-ounce jar of jelly that costs $2.28? Okay, so let's just go ahead and figure out how much the units are on this. $1.98 over 18 ounces. 
or 228 uh, divided by 24 ounces. Okay. So now I'm going to have to do 198 divided by 18. It's not too bad. Do it right there. The decimal there. 11 cents. I'm just going to write 11 cents quicker. And the other one, see, 228 divided by 24. You can already tell it's going to be less, right? <clears throat> so, I'm just curious if this is going to go forever. Yep. And there we go. 95, but it's not 95 cents, it's 9.5 cents. So which one's a better buy? 11 cents per ounce or 9.5 cents per ounce? Well, obviously less. So we're going to say the 24 ounce jar at 228 is better, is the better buy. Okay, sorry that one took a while. The Smiths drove 416 miles in, in 8 hours. What was their average speed? So remember it's miles per hour. So miles go on top, hours go on the bottom. We divide that through and I believe that would be what, 52? Yes, 52 um, miles per hour. That's how we write it. That's not very fast. It must be a dull old dirt road or something. All right, their car traveled the first 322 miles of the trip. I don't know who, who they are. I guess they're still talking about the Smiths. So they went 322 miles on 14 gallons of gas. What is their average uh, miles per gallon? So what we do is 322 miles on 14 gallons. Remember, we want to get it down to one gallon. So what we do is 32 or 322 divided by 14. That would be, what is that actually, three, yeah, okay, so 23 miles per gallon, that's how that looks, so then we'd say 23 miles per gallon, and that's pretty normal. All right, Amy. When Amy landed in Belgium, she exchanged $40 for 44 euros. What is the rate in euros per dollar? So 44 euros. Can I spell that right? No. EU. Euros per $40. And so that's going to reduce to 4 goes in there, 11 tenths, right? I still can't seem to spell euros. So what we could say is um, 11, how about let's do it this, the way the book says is 11 euros per ten dollars. Okay, and the other way would be to do it the other way, uh, around. Here we go, spell it correct. So that would be um, ten dollars per eleven euros. Okay, getting closer to being done.
another full page. Find the sales tax of a $36.89 radio when it is 7%. So we're just looking for tax. They didn't ask for how much it would cost to take that thing out, the, out of the building. So all we do is just multiply that through and we get Two point five eight two three, but that needs to give us the actual dollar amount. So that is two dollars, and it looks like the two has no bearing. So it's just two dollars fifty eight cents is our um, tax. All right. Find the total price of the radio in problem sheet G, including tax. So now that we've already done that step, I wouldn't do the 107% because we already found 7%. So what we do is just add 258 to that. Like yep. So it looks like we are paying $39.47. For the radio. Okay, find the total price including 6% tax for this for a dinner, a beverage, and a dessert. So, yes, we first have to add all those things up and see what we get. Okay, so it was $10 and Thirty-five cents. So I'm peeking to make sure I did it right. Ten dollars thirty-five cents is how much it all costs. But then uh, we gotta get a tax on that and add it up. So we could either do one hundred six percent of ten thirty-five, or we could find six percent of ten thirty-five and then add that to ten thirty-five itself. And I will make sure that we know how to do the shortcut by the end of our time together because I don't want you to always go the slow round on this one. So it, we're in just change, just pennies. We actually um, need it to round there and we can just cut off that because it doesn't give any strength to the two. So 62 cents is the tax, right? So we got to add 62 to 35 to the 1035 and I'm going to squeeze it in there and it looks like it's 1097 is the total bill. Okay. After paying a restaurant bill of about $15, Nate returned to the table and left a tip of 15%. How much did Nate leave for a tip? Now remember I told you a tip was 10% and plus 5%. Well, 10% of 15 is $1.50, and then half of $1.50 is 75 So altogether, that makes $2.25, doesn't it? So we can still do that in our head. So $2.25 is my answer, but let's show it on this one. We get to do mental on the next one. So if you're going to leave a 15% tip on 15 wouldn't it be nice to know that you're squares 15 times 15 remember 13 times 13 is 169 and 14 times 14 is 196 15 times 15 is 225 then we put in our two decimals so we get two dollars and 25 cents so a couple ways it, it didn't see it wasn't as as hard as you wanted it to or I thought it would be so Two dollars twenty-five cents, or remember, ten percent of fifteen is dollar fifty. Half a dollar fifty is seventy-five. Tack that on, and there you've got your fifteen percent. Speaking of, mentally estimate fifteen percent tip on a eleven ninety-five bill. So basically, let's round that to twelve, right? So fifteen percent of twelve. Well, remember, what's ten percent of twelve? Is a dollar twenty. So. 15% would be half of that. So it looks like a dollar eighty would be the answer now. If you could do that in your head, that'd be great. I showed work this time just so you could see what was going on in my head. 
in case you got stuck. Okay, so again, I would take half of 12, or sorry, 10% of 12 is $1.20. A dollar, half of $1.20 is 80 cents. Sorry, half of $1.20 is 60 cents. Add that on as $1.80. Okay, how could you estimate a 20% tip? Well, we estimated a 10, 15% tip by doing 10 plus half of 10. Couldn't we find 10%? Say, so say find 10% and double it. There's your answer. Okay, I'm going to just shut us off because this was a 